Yo, so question before we get into this. God, I'm about to get cooked. Are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as popular as, say, Spider-Man or the Power Rangers, Sonic? I don't know. I'm just trying to gauge the popularity here. All right, so to be honest, I wasn't even going to see this movie. I was on vacation. We got there before the check-in time. We've all been there before. So me and the homies headed out to the movies. And I mean, it was either this or Sir Davos vs. Dracula on a boat. Damn, that actually sounds kind of cool when you put it that way. I'm rambling. Point is, August is kind of cooking when it comes to these new releases. From Blue Beetle to Gran Turismo to the release of the Ahsoka show, we're actually not doing too shabby when it comes to the actual entertainment factor from some of these new releases. After the theatrical and cultural event that was Barbenheimer, the inevitable slowdown at the box office was bound to come. People showed out for Barbie and Oppenheimer, which really doesn't happen that much in our post-endgame society. Which is more than enough of a reason to warrant an entire separate video on the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Released around two, three weeks ago and heading to digital now at this point, the movie unfortunately fell into the trap of not really receiving the box office numbers enough to captivate the casual audience into going to see it. But even more than that, what I believe was the biggest downfall when it comes to this movie financially, because it was good if I haven't made that clear by now, was the missed marketing. Or to be more specific, the lack of marketing at all. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. And while that's something I'll go into a little bit later, we can't sing a movie's praises as well as a movie's downfall if we don't know the plot. So to make things easier on you and also myself, especially for those who are already familiar, Mutant Mayhem acts as an origin story for our turtles. We all know Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo. They're iconic characters at this point. Hence why I asked you that question in the intro. The story actually kicks off with an attack on scientist Dr. Stockman, the creator of the ooze that can make animals sentient, who in the scuffle loses the turtles in the sewers, who end up ingesting the ooze to become our titular protagonist. The movie itself is more along the lines of Pinocchio vibes, as you follow the turtles as they struggle with their reality of being turtles. With dreams of living on the surface and being accepted by humans, the turtles will do anything and everything to achieve their goals. And when a criminal steals the bike of a human, April O'Neil, instead of turning their backs, the turtles seize the opportunity that's been given to them and save April, gaining acceptance from their first human. So rewinding back to when I said, we'll get to that, meet Superfly, the antagonist of the film, and the first sentient animal created by Baxter Stockman, the scientist from earlier in the movie. Unlike the turtles, Superfly has a pure hatred for humans. Knowing he'll never be accepted for who he is and after witnessing humans kill his father figure, Superfly hatches a plan to turn everyone in the city into hybrid animal human beings. Think the ending of The Amazing Spider-Man, but instead of all lizards, it's literally Zootopia, but ugly as fuck. But with such a massive threat and the turtles being so inexperienced, Will the turtles be able to muster up the strength necessary to achieve their goals? And even if they do, will the humans be able to accept them as the turtles they really are? Watch the movie to find out. The answer might not be as cliche as you think, but for now, let's get into the pros. You see, what really makes this movie so enjoyable, and what makes me think that Seth Rogen could really have something else cooking here in the oven, is that we didn't really try too hard to be anything else but a fun, semi-comedic, borderline sometimes. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And lighthearted origin movie. Much like my review for Blue Beetle, second self-promo, I know, I'm gross, Mutant Mayhem wasn't anything but trying to entertain me. We've seen Seth Rogen do it before with the boys in Invincible, still waiting on that second season, mate. So with an IP like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it was mostly just about the direction that was going to be taken. And I'm willing to walk down the path I'm being led down after watching this movie. 
Also, the animation is pretty sharp and unique with this one. As someone who watches a lot, I mean, a lot of anime, I've seen my fair share of different styles, patterns, and directions when it comes to some of these studios and specifically unique animation styles like in Mob Psycho. And I can easily put my stamp on the film that it was crisp and digestible throughout the entirety of the movie. The fight sequences were direct and effective in showcasing everything that was going on from the many angles and POVs that you get from following four protagonists with pretty much the same abilities but unique personalities that contribute to their fighting styles. But as with most films, the film doesn't come without its flaws. So with that being said, let's hop into the cons. As mentioned before, the marketing was absolutely atrocious when it came to this movie, which again, isn't really understandable coming from Seth Rogen because he has a pretty incredible recent track record with quality products and fan investment. And while the strikes are going on at this time, and I'm not really 100% sure if that affected the promotion or the marketing of this movie as a whole, or if it fit into the little grace period like Barbie and Oppenheimer. But man, when I tell you the last time I heard any real marketing from this movie, wasn't even from the movie or studio itself. Just the online outrage on the fact that April O'Neil was black. <laughs> like, whoa, like who even cares about that stuff anymore? As someone who also outrages from time to time, this one felt like it was one of those times where it truly did not matter. And she wasn't even stereotypical or what you might expect from a progressive Hollywood nowadays. <laughs> she was truly just a character. A shame, really. And with a cast as deep as this, I mean, recognizable names across the board with Jackie Chan, Paul Rudd, Ice Cube, Post Malone, John Carlo Exposito, and even Seth Rogen himself, this shouldn't really be the case. I can see this movie following the same trajectory as Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, another film that wasn't as successful when it came to the box office, but made a name for itself on the streaming side of things. Where if Seth Rogen had the opportunity, studio backup, and direction, I could easily see this iteration of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles gaining more of a substantial fan base once more eyes are about to see it in the comfort of their own homes by the time the sequel releases. At the end of the day, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem was a fun, slightly comedic, and lighthearted origin story that I could see myself attaching to in the future. And that's all you could really ask for when your last iteration of these characters were directed by Michael Bay and your main attraction was Megan Fox. Again. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. As always, comment down below how you guys felt about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Fuck, that is a lot. If you haven't seen it, do you plan to watch it when it comes to digital or streaming, or can you just not even be bothered? I don't know, man. Seth Rogen has been really cooking recently, and so have these August releases. The box office isn't safe, but entertainment has been had in August. So good for the people that did work on some of these movies. They weren't well watched, but they were well made. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.